de som någonstans spelar av framtiden kommer att bestämma för hur det kommer bli för Sverige i framtiden. Så att, eh, jag hoppas att det kanske finns frågor till eh, de här tre herrarna. Eh, Jacqueline som är där, hon eh, tittar ut och ser ifall det är någon som vinkar. Hon har med sig en mikrofon och får ställa frågorna. Men vi kanske gör det på engelska så att de här eh, herrarna förstår. Men där borta finns en fråga redan. Uh, but I would like to start off with uh, one question. What do you think, we have heard of, of uh, success stories from Denmark and from England, but what is your main uh, factors to success, do you think? I think the main factor to success has to be content that is compelling uh, and, and relevant. Uh, if, you, if you don't start with that, then uh, you, have, you have no future. Uh, and there is a great danger that, um, that sometimes new innovations are driven from the technology front, uh, which is, which, which uh, how clever this thing is and, and, and impresses technical people, but actually has very little relevance uh, to, to the end user. So you have to start with the man in the street and say, do you like what radio is delivering? Uh, and if you don't, one of the things that frustrates you uh, and, and engage with them in a way that is, is, is relevant to their lifestyle to engage with them on a platform that is relevant in their lifestyle. And if you can do that, then, then everything else will follow. Mm. I think it's fair to say that one of the great successes in the early days of radio at the EV in the UK was uh, BBC Seven, which is a station run, I think, by 17 people, including the, the person over the door of MT. And that used 40 years of the BBC's archived content. It was comedy, plays, serials, and you know, I think that's that drove the initial radio sales. I know my wife listens to it continuously, you know, on and on it, all through the night. It, it's that compelling. And that's the sort of fairly less you didn't get with FM. It's sort of fairly rigid format. And I, I think, as a broadcaster, I think it's important that I am on all platforms and also I, if, if I do a conceptual study and I ask uh, uh, what listeners are after and they want a special genre of music, uh, there's not enough room in the FM. Um, so if I would like to make 10 or 12 or 15 different radio stations because I want to get closer to the individual, uh, DAB will give you that opportunity. Um, today I'm, I'm so thrilled to come here in Sweden today and hear Radio 100 which is playing in Stockholm. That would have never happened. It could have never happened on FM 15 years ago. So our, today I'm, I'm super happy because there was a group. So I think you have to be exactly, uh, there has to be a lot of possibility to make a lot of different radio stations and keep that up. I think we have a question in the audience. Ah. For you, the last of radio, as I see, is essentially a set-top box for, for radio, where you get traditional access to buying music and other things. But the uh, radio is it's also broadcasting and broadcasting the new standards. When do you see this functionality come into the DMV standards or the DMV standards or whatever? Um, hopefully soon. Uh, this the launch is just version one of a long range of products to include DMV. A lot of phones in the UK are probably over here include FM. As standard, you know, it's a, it's been morphed into a, a low power, low cost technology. Right? I'm expecting DAB to do very 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 well in that space. And the beauty of it is, a lot of these phones have the multimedia, they have a screen built in already, they have a storage built in already, they're ideal devices. You know, is it a phone with radio or is it a radio with phone? That's the way you look at it, really. Just to, to clarify my question, I, I, I compare it to the UDH and the UBC, where you actually have standards of conditional access and sort of a commercial market living uh, quite together. I mean, there are conditional access um, hooks in the DAB standard, and there is standardization work on interfacing uh, the DAB receiver as an API from the receiver to the controlling device. These things are taking time, it's a standard body, but this is happening, it's moving forward. And I think one problem with standards committees is they take a long time deciding things. Sometimes when you get market leading Technologies, they almost drive the standards, and that's what I think is happening here. Does that answer your question? Vi har frågat om det kan vara så kommer att sätta in med en telefon. How did the, the public react to the fact that uh, there is now another type of data collect, data plus, out on the market? 
of that one. If, if, you, if, you, if you went to a bus queue in London and said, tell me, are you fretting about a new damn standard? That uh, I don't know what on earth you're talking about. Um, it, it, this, is, this is where uh, you can look at it from a consumer's perspective or from a technical perspective. Now, you have to look at the market and say, the standard that is existing in the UK, is that delivering a compelling proposition to the end user? And the answer is yes. Uh, from the, the sales uptake, from the radio tracking studies, from the satisfaction rating, it's delivering a satisfactory level of, of service. So, if, if, if the market was saying, well, there's different radio things being, that being around, but actually it's all not interested and it doesn't really appeal, then you could say, well, okay, well, we need to enhance it by adding something else to it, which is, is potentially a, a, a new coder. But the market that facing again the consumer, the consumer isn't saying it's not delivering to my satisfaction, it's saying it's delivering very handsomely. There's a really great danger chasing new technology. I mean, um, radio, in, in, in pre-digital world, it's actually been based around technology that's 100 years old. But it's delivering a satisfactory um, uh, uh, um, package of, of services that so people sound unhappy with that. And there's a great danger of every time something new comes, then we must have that one. Because by the time that's installed in, in 5 million homes, there will be another new one. So you have to base it on consumer feedback and say, is this delivering a satisfactory service to you? And if it is, well, then no. I have a question. Uh -huh. Paul. Sorry, I can hear you. Yeah, about the content you're talking about. Um, how do you choose when it talks about 20 stations on DAB in England and about 200,000 on internet? You have more content to choose on internet than you have on DAB. But as I, as I explained the example in, in Bristol, the fact that there are twice as many stations doesn't mean we're looking to go to listen to, to, to all of those stations. So content is, is quite specific. I actually bought an internet radio just to, to get the, the experience and to see what it, what, it, what it meant. And it's quite interesting that you plug it in the first day and it scrolls through and it says you've got 5,000 stations to listen to. So you play around with it, of course, and for the first couple of days it's quite interesting to listen to, listen to the traffic that's coming from New York and the New Jersey Turnpike is backed up and, uh, and the such and such Delhi has an offer on. So that's quite entertaining, but actually very quickly, that's completely irrelevant to my life because I'm living in Bedfordshire in England, but I, I'm not interested in what's happening on the New Jersey Turnpike. If, if that radio station in New York is playing Phil Collins and my radio station is playing Phil Collins, well, what's the, what's the appeal of that, of, that, of that station? So very quickly, and, and then I started to listen to some UK stations coming from other cities because I like the music genre. And again, very quickly, listening to the traffic problems in Birmingham or an advert for a curry house in Solihull is completely irrelevant to me where I, where I live. So you quite quickly drill back down to some very specific... So that doesn't mean you're suddenly going to start listening to a thousand stations because they're, because they're there. There is an element that if there is a station, if you're, a, if you're an absolute extreme jazz fan and there is a station in Chicago that is playing that, that you might go and, and listen to that. But I think internet actually, when, when again you view it from a consumer's perspective, has, has uh, appealed to expats and it has appealed to quite extreme music listening um, uh, uh, genres. And, and then very quickly beyond that, it's actually relevant to, to the bulk of people that are speaking with. But you are really old, I think. The youngsters, <laughs> what the problem, you tell me and other people here, that the youngsters doesn't listen so much on FM, and you think they should choose dub. Why should they choose dub when they have because this choice because, on the internet? Because of the way they like to listen to radio. You mm. can't have your internet in the shower, you can't have it in the car, you can't have it out in the garden. It's the way you like to listen to radio while you're busy doing something else uh, around the house and, and, and on the move. Now, I'm not saying DAB is the king and internet is, is the enemy, not at all. Mm. The internet enhances the appeal of radio, it allows you to engage with it in, in more places. But to, to pursue the argument that internet gives you a huge amount of choice and therefore is more appealing actually isn't borne out by the, the, the fact that the listener uh, wants radio for, which is to engage with his area where he is, the facts in his bed. I mean, if I listen to the radio in, in New York, I don't know that the central line in London is blocked, but I need to pack a, a raincoat today. And those are fundamental, um, uh, unique issues that radio delivers and enhance, enhance your, your life. 
But how much of this dub stations are really local? They're sitting in London and broadcasting to the whole uh, England. Local, regional, and national. So uh, I chose to listen to a station who has good programming, and it mustn't be. It could be in New York or Baghdad or whatever. Well, it depends what you call the programming. If it's just about music, well, then don't bother with the internet. You can buy iPod. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask Jim. Uh, Nick showed us a couple of exciting, uh, some exciting stuff with the music downloading and stuff like that. Are you interested in um, using those types of applications? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, I, I, I think it's incredible um, because it gives me a new business case. It gives me an opportunity to also uh, to earn money in a different way. I, I don't believe that uh, the radio station that you only listen to only for music, music is a part of it, but entertainment. Uh, what we do locally, what we tell about, what his stories we talk about in Denmark are extremely important. So I, it doesn't bother me if somebody buys a song from the internet and push it on their iPod, I don't think I'm going to lose. In fact, I can profit from it. I think they're going to do it anyways. So I might as well get something out of it. So uh, I'm very much forward to, look forward to uh, the possibility of selling music through my radio station. Excellent. So, yeah. uh, I'd like to also just quickly say also on the, my last comment before I ended there, I said that I think it's important for the youth also uh, um, that get DAB because I also believe that if you do not give the youth a large selection, you will be pushing them to go to the internet and try to find something. Because you will be looking for some other things. You'll lose your whole cultural base, uh, basis because they will be pushed to try to find and look other places for their needs if you don't get the selection here in the already in the street. I think it comes down to quality, not quantity. I think there's yeah. a wants to 52 channels but nothing on. Yeah. We've got to avoid that situation. Absolutely right. Thank you, Percy Peterson, working as a uh, Spectrum Consultant for World DMV. Uh, are you very special uh, in UK and Denmark? Why doesn't it happen so fast in France, Germany and Sweden? What is the difference? I think um, that, that's kicked off by, by government. Uh, well, I mean, you can answer for, for, for Denmark. But in, in the UK, there was a clear uh, vision from the government to say we want to deliver media digitally because we believe it uh, uses the spectrum more efficiently and it allows broadcasters to better address a growing diversity of the population. So there was a clear focus from government that said this is what we want to do. Uh, and to encourage broadcasters to do that, they made a very big incentive. They said uh, if, you roll, if, you, if you commit to a DAB network and infrastructure, we will roll over your analog licenses free of charge. So there was a big incentive to encourage them uh, to, to do that. Uh, and, and then clearly within the, the radio industry, there's a clear understanding that if radio the medium is going to retain its relevance, you have to enhance uh, what it offers to, to engage with the consumer who's living in a converging and a more comfortable digital world. I agree. I agree. I think that it was, it was huge. It was been backed up by the government and the public radio was very strong. I think also, though, uh, without, say, say, uh, irritating the larger countries. I think it's an arrogant question as well to understand that, that it's okay to say someone else has uh, a standard that, that doesn't have to be reinvented. So it's a question of accepting something that's been done and saying, okay, maybe we can switch it a little bit, but we'll accept it because it works. And not trying to reinvent the wheel in every country. I mean, no technology is going to be perfect, but let's you know, choose one, move on. Yeah, yeah go ahead. My reference on FM, I've been more interested. Obviously, radio is dominated in Sweden by two major players. And, uh, does digital radio give a chance for smaller radio stations to actually come forward and actually develop, develop new ideas and exciting innovations? Or does it continue to be dominated by big players? Uh, yeah, I, I, of course, I don't know the situation in Sweden here. Uh, I have asked them how do you get on a ADAB because I would like to be on there. Uh, as I said, I'm really excited that I get to transmit these two weeks in Stockholm, uh, and I'd like to be on here all the time. So that's my question right now to the, the government in Stockholm. How do we get on? I'd like to get on here. It's actually very cost efficient in Denmark, uh, and um, so it's, it's a better way to do it because there's more room. So I, I don't know the situation in, in Sweden area right now, but it is 
we're going through a period in Denmark anyway where there's going to be more rooms, more books that they're making, and that'll give the opportunity for both local, regional, and national stations to go on. So, uh, and I know that they have that possibility in England now. Yeah, and in the, in the UK, and uh, oh, it was very huge on. to the BBC. Um, there was only one national commercial radio station on FM, two more on the media. So digital allowed you to have a level playing field. It allowed commercial to have as many offerings as the BBC had. So it regressed that, that, that balance. Uh, it also allowed stations to move out of their core area. There was a station called um, XFN in London, new music station. Uh, and because of analog uh, spectrum um, yeah, problems, that's the only place it could, it could perform. Um, but with DAB freeing up more space, using the spectrum more efficiently, XFM is now broadcast in Bristol and in Birmingham and in Manchester and in Liverpool and in Glasgow. So suddenly a local or regional station has become a quasi-national station. So, yes, yeah, it, it can release the potential to talk to new audiences. But you could also target those areas by local ad and data insertion. So you could have weather and traffic relevant to those areas just by feeding into the mob structures and that. So you have the, the core audio content for localization. Jag ställer frågan så här. What do you think about this American technology, HD radio? It's probably better to ask in America, at least. <laughs> I think America is a different set of, of, of issues. You know, it's, it's a huge landmass. Uh, there are no, um, apart from their friends in Mexico and, and Canada, there are, there are no borders. So delivering uh, via satellite is clearly a, a very efficient way to, to get to a, a, a large audience. Um, delivering satellite radio in, in Europe is, is not so compelling because uh, the, the shadow of a satellite would mean uh, we'd have to be delivering services. I'm not talking about satellite, oh, about okay. HD radio. Um, well, it comes back to the issue of content, I think. But if we, if we continue that question, isn't there a problem that we don't have one single uh, standard for all types of broadcasting in the world? Yeah, I agree. I mean, this will be addressed by software radio devices. A lot of the, the decoding technology you see in those radios is actually software radio. And back, there are only a certain number of communication, co communications algorithms in the world. Actually, it's just combining those algorithms together. So, one software platform, I know some of the, I used to work for the company called Radio Show. And the FM is done in DSP, the, the DAB is done in DSP, all there, all done in software. Um, so, an understanding is not a huge problem really. Uh, it, it really affects cars where you're alone fitting the stuff and you're sending cars to different markets. So, ideally, one software uh, standard neutral platform is probably the way we'll go. Go for it. My name is Paul Stewart, I'm uh, representing EMI, and um, I'm really glad to have uh, heard Coldplay. Robbie Williams and Doug to be played here. And I'm absolutely thrilled to hear about Unique Interactive and I can see a very good business case. Um, um, but as we all know, it's the, the music industry is, is uh, in many ways seeing the digital technology as a double-edged sword. We're seeing enormous piracy on the internet and, and so on, but at the same time we, we're moving in a, in a digital direction and making all our contents available on all platforms. Uh, I'm, I'm absolutely certain that your technology, the unique interactive, is, is uh, DRM protected and everything in, in, in a good way. But um, on a sort of on a more on a broader scale, sort of, um, I can picture that it, it would be possible with new technology to, for a consumer, to almost harvest everything that's available on, on digital radio down to devices and everything, without sort of the artists getting anything or producers or content providers. How has been this been handled in your territories and what's your view on this? I mean, we saw this with satellite radio in the US. You know, it was, the, the satellites called the, the iPods in the sky. I mean, DAB has no DRM built into the standard um, at the moment. But you know, as we move forward, DAB plus, you know, DAB plus plus in many times in the future, perhaps this will do. I think DRM is, I know EMI are considering you know, whether the current way of DRM is actually the right way. And our system is designed to fit in with, is it heavily DRM, is it actually convert to play, you know? Because people can get it a million other ways, they can rip CDs, they can peer to peer. 
you know, the Pandora's box is already open. You can't put the lid back on. If you treat customers with respect, I think they would prefer to, you know, and don't overcharge them. I think they would prefer to not. I, I certainly would. If my iPhone could buy a track I had on the iPod radio, I'd be happy to pay a small sum for that. And I think it would reasonably increase with an open and sensible attitude to music power. I mean, music piracy will always exist. You can't stamp it out. But you can make it so easy for people to actually get the content that it's not worth their trouble. That's it's all about easy use. You know, there's some effort involved with PSP networking this year. Am I going to be called? You know, how long will it take to download? If you just listen to someone get that and have a link sent to you, I'm sure you pay the extra money. That's my opinion, but then. Yeah, uh, I love it. But uh, if you do buy, it's very interesting, of course, to buy the same media and uh, it's in for flag. But can you also find the same device in the back catalogue or something else? I'm buying this, I don't know. Currently, you can buy the last five songs, the current songs, the last five songs in the playlist. But only, only on the playlist. You can't go in and buy other. I mean, there are mechanisms for doing this stuff, you know, could, could easily be extended to that. That's an interesting point. Perhaps it's still the last week's playlist. It's not a. But again, that's more a, a mobile technology rather than DAB technology. The thing about DAB is it's broadcast. It, it, it's not point to point like mobile. It actually will serve as an audio system simultaneously. So if you want to download it, you can never simultaneously want to do it with mobile. Well, um, the, 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 the point is there is a solution here, here and now. And if, if you start with, uh, I don't know, what I'm told you might be, you say, okay, let's, here, is, here is something new. Um, uh, and you deliver it to consumers and say, we're broadcasting, it's fantastic. But the consumers don't hear it. Why can't they hear it? Because there aren't any devices out there to listen to it on. Um, it's pretty basic, but pretty important. Uh, and so you then got to start engaging with the Tony, and so on, 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 and so on. So if that was a, an option, then you're talking six years before you've got a, a mass market uh, solution that's available to you. In six years, the world of digital convergence has moved on a heck of a pace, uh, and potentially you're, you're too late. Um, so if yeah, there is a solution the there that exists, there is a product that exists, there is an understanding of what it delivers, and there is some strong consumer feedback that says we like what it delivers, then I, I, I don't see why one should be looking for a, a, an alternative. Because the danger then is you're constantly looking for, a, for, a, for a, an upgrade of that alternative, you never actually deliver anything to, to market. Was there a particular technology you had in mind? No, okay. I mean, just one more thing. A lot of people would argue that the sound quality of DMB is uh, worse than good FM, so isn't that like regression? Well, again, I, you know, I go back, uh, I'm, a, I'm a marketeer and an old fashioned idea, I go back to the people who are buying it and asking them. Uh, and the survey that I, I put up on the board says, um, what do you like about this? It's very good, excellent or good. I think it's 88% said they thought the sound quality was excellent or good. So that suggests to me that the market is perfectly happy with what it's delivering. I know in the UK, uh, Ofcom have, uh, have done their own independent survey so you have to go and check that, and they're getting exactly the same results. So the consumer is saying, oh, I'm happy with it. It's actually with any new technology. Before I joined the radio industry, I was in the photographic industry with uh, Olympus Harris for many years. So I've seen photography go from analog to, to digital. And in the early days, there were a huge amount of complaints that, uh, that a, a, uh, an image made up of pixels couldn't possibly match the quality of an image made up of grey structure from, from film. And those arguments came from people 
from Bose SLR, so quite a, a, a specialist niche of the consumer. But that's market, so I love it. I don't need to buy another roll of film. I can see the picture on the back. I can read it if I don't like it. It's fantastic. So the, I, I, base it, I base my findings on, on year-wide consumers, and, and they're telling us that it's delivering satisfactorily. Would you buy a high definition television and have one channel versus a, a normal standard television you're probably happy with doing 20? It's just the way of looking at it. Okay. Thanks, Mick. Yeah. Thank you very much. Sure. Tack till Mattia. Det är till mig. Du fattar att jag ska få lite...